On April 20, 2010, the Deepwater Horizon disaster changed the lives of millions living near the Gulf of Mexico, as well as the scientists who responded to the crisis. These are some of their stories, intimate portraits of research, innovation, discovery. Welcome, I'm Jim McNamee, editor of Dispatches from the Gulf, a series of documentaries, short videos, and podcasts. In today's podcast, we'll hear from two women who work at the University of Southern Mississippi's Marine Science Lab, looking at the diets of larval fish. First, graduate student Jana Herman tells us how to use microzooplankton, tiny animals that float in the ocean and feed baby fish, to look for oil contamination in fish populations. With our project, we're looking at larval fish diets. So after the samples are collected, we bring them back and we're removing the larval fish and eggs so we can remove the gut to look and see what they're eating. We use a tray so we can easily separate the organisms looking for the fish and eggs. Here is an example of a larval fish and two fish eggs and a larval crab, which is a crab zoea, and various other zooplankton in the dish. A lot of the organisms in the zooplankton are larval forms of other organisms. We're trying to assess the larval condition after the oil spill. We're not really finding any oil in the larvae, we're just trying to see if their health has been affected post oil spill. Despite evidence that these zooplankton can be contaminated by oil, Jenna and the rest of the lab haven't found that the oil goes on to contaminate baby fish. This is good news for the Gulf and for scientists like Jana, who love working there. I've wanted to be a scientist um, since I was a child. I've always loved nature and discovering new things. I actually wanted to be a marine scientist since I was probably 10 years old. I guess what excites me about this job is there's so many different organisms that everything is new. I've seen thousands of samples and I feel like every time I look into a sample, there's a new organism that I may not have seen, or it's a different shape or a different color or something, so it's really interesting. Across the lab, Carla Culpepper is also looking through a microscope. She's about to dissect a baby Atlantic bumper fish to see what it's been eating. Bumper are not too big. Yeah, about a hand size. Um, I've been cutting open about um, anywhere from two to maybe seven or eight millimeter fish. Cut it open and see if I can identify anything that he's been eating. I actually pulled out, he, he's got some copepods in his belly. A copepod is a small crustacean. If you've ever watched SpongeBob, the character named Plankton is a copepod. I'm a lab technician here at Gulf Coast Research Lab. I really love my work because it's not your everyday nine to five job. I'm sometimes on a boat or sometimes sitting here looking at microscopes. It's very interesting to, you just don't even know what's all in the ocean. You know, a lot of people don't find it as exciting, but we, we absolutely love plankton in this lab. I'm from a small town in North Alabama, so it didn't seem like a, a job that you would think that you could get up there, but I, I knew pretty young I wanted to go into it. Um, it just seemed like a dream. Um, but in the seventh grade, I think, or the eighth grade, I had a science teacher that took me down to Dauphin Island Sea Lab for a class, a week trip, and um, I, I definitely loved it after that. Today, thousands of scientists, oceanographers, chemists, engineers, biologists, are all working together to develop newer and better ways to understand and ease the impact of oil spills. To learn more about their work, visit our webpage at dispatchesfromthegulf.com. Funding for this podcast was provided by a grant by the Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative. And thanks for listening.